Hello, welcome to Morris Money, where we give you stock tips in under five minutes. I'm your host, Morris Willie, and an asterisk on that under five minutes, because today we're talking about everything that's happened with ILIS in 2023. I've put together all of our ILIS videos from 2023 so far into this one video, so you have a one-stop shop for everything that's occurred to ILIS this year. So sit back and enjoy. Do you see Mr. Northington? He's subscribed in style, and so can you. Subscribe in style with Morris Money. I was going through the news, and yesterday was Alice's annual shareholder meeting. Now, I'm going to do a deep dive on that Monday, but for today, I'm talking about a majority-owned subsidiary of Alice, Quality Industrial, QIND, and their share purchase agreement to acquire 52% of Quality International. As a YouTuber, I'm not able to give financial advice, but I can give viewing advice. And if you want to watch the best stock content, subscribe to Morris Money. Headquartered in the United Arab Emirates, Quality International has been manufacturing for more than two decades and now operates from approximately 10 million square feet of manufacturing facilities, employing a workforce of more than 1,000. The company delivers turnkey integrated solutions for the oil and gas, wastewater and offshore sectors, and boasts an extensive list of reference customers, including the likes of BP, Shell, Total, Chevron, Sissel, ADNOC, and many more. The chairman of Quality International commented, we welcome Alice International and the Quality Industrial Corp team in joining hands with Quality International in its exciting growth journey and to scaling new heights in our customer delivery experience. Our aim is to provide the best in-class equipment to each of our customers who place their trust in our engineering and manufacturing capabilities and be their long-standing preferred supply partner of choice. Historically, Quality International has delivered approximately $100 million in annual revenue and holds a current order book of over 150 million. The total price for acquisition of the majority stake in Quality International will be up to $137 million paid in six trench payments, with the final three trench payments conditional upon EBITDA targets being met in 2023 and 24. Further details on the signed share purchase agreement can be found within QIND's 8K filing on January 18th of this year. I will make sure to link that down below if you want to read more about it. John Paul Backwell, QIND's Chief Executive Officer, commented, We are extremely pleased to welcome all of Quality International's more than 1,000 employees to the ILIS and QIND family. Having worked closely with the Quality International management team and personally reviewed the impressive confirmed order book for 2023, I am confident that the company will exceed its growth targets. This is a powerful acquisition for QIND with further aligned acquisitions to be added in due course. Course. Some interesting news that I hadn't heard of until I started looking for a report or recap of Alice's shareholder meeting yesterday, but I happened to come across this. So I decided to talk about this, and again, I'll be sure to do a deep dive of Alice's shareholder meeting Monday. Furthermore, be on the lookout for a YouTube short later today where I talk about the potential takeover of Lucent Motors. Make sure to stay tuned for that. After dropping a combined 25% over the past two trading days, Ilyas's shareholder meeting was a disappointment to shareholders. Today, I'm breaking down the shareholder meeting and what could be next for Ilyas shareholders. As a YouTuber, I'm not able to give financial advice, but I can give viewing advice. And if you want to watch the best stock content, subscribe to Morris Money. What I found interesting this time around was it wasn't all bullish for Ilis as usual. Shareholders were much more crucial this time around, and it makes sense. With shares being down over 75% in the past year, it makes more sense why shareholders would be more critical of Ilis this time around. And Ilis is taking note of this. It's been reported that the Ilis Discord is kicking out people that are making critical comments about the stock. A moderator of the Discord commented in the Discord, good job, we are temporarily not allowing new entries unless it's an old friend returning or someone else who is respectable vouches for them. Not a good look for the company. Times are not always going to be bullish and kicking out people just because they have a bearish take on the stock, even a valid bearish take on the stock, is just unacceptable in my opinion. If you've been subscribed to the channel for a while, you know that I'm an eyeless bull, but every now and then I give some bearish commentary on the stock because it's valid bearish commentary. And if people are making valid bearish comments about the stock within the Discord, it's 
it should be allowed, but that's just my opinion. Another thing that's made this video hard is not getting 100% facts here. This is more of an opinionated video and more so what I can infer from the annual shareholder meeting. Usually, Alice is quick to put out a press release or two, but as we've seen, they haven't said anything about the annual shareholder meeting and I'm just going off of what other shareholders have said and what I can guess has happened during this shareholder meeting. One slide from the shareholder meeting that I cannot confirm is official or not because I haven't seen it anywhere else except for a couple message boards is the status update about the company's group companies and acquisitions. As you can see in the table, complete acquisitions, Firebug, the vehicle converters, BCD Fire, Bullhead Products, Georgia Fire and Rescue, Quality International Corp, Replay Solutions, Al Socha Safety, I apologize if I butchered that one, Quality M International and Hyperion Defense, apologize for that screw up. And the 2023 forecast for these businesses is 163 million with a 2024 forecast of 250 million. Now this would be great, but let's remember again, these are forecasts for these businesses. Now, if they were to do these numbers, that would be great. But let's also look at the fact that the Eyeless market cap right now is sitting around 90 to 100 million dollars. And that's actually probably gone down since the last time I checked it. Next, we have the letter of intent. We have QIND2, QIND3, ERT7, and Hyperion1. The forecast is for these for 2023 is 121 million and 2024 uh, 160 million. In negotiation, we have Replay Solutions 1, Hyperion 2, and ERT 8 with forecasts of 45 million and 55 million for 2023 and 2024 respectfully. And we have some in discussion acquisitions with ERT 9, ERT 10, and Hyperion 3 with forecasts of 950 million and $1 billion for 2023 and 2024 respectfully. What's interesting about this though is one stock twist user made a very valid point. A big money acquisition for Eyeless was Vira Drones, which has slowly fizzled out. We haven't heard anything about the Vira Drones acquisition in recent memory. And from what it looks like, there will be no Vira Drones acquisition as of right now because as we've seen with the status updates, it's nowhere to be found. The bullish sentiment is high on Eyeless right now and it shows in the share price. As I said earlier, in the past two trading days, the stock is down almost 25%. It took a massive crash on Friday with it being down near 20%. Now, many people have said this has come from shareholders selling off and short sellers, a mix of both possibly. Currently, Seeking Alpha estimates that 5% of Alice's float is shorted. Could this be right? Could this be wrong? I'm not fully sure. This was the best estimate I could find for the potential short interest in Alice. But what I can say is sentiment is definitely not good for the stock right now. I bought some Alice shares before, right before actually, and after the shareholder meeting Friday. But after this, I don't think I'm going to buy shares for a while until I see an uptick in price or a potential bullish catalyst coming to the stock. The next one I could see coming up is Alice officially going to OTCQB. This uplisting could be a great bullish catalyst for the stock that could hopefully send the shares flying. But besides that, I don't see many catalysts coming up unless they have a big acquisition in the works like Vira Drones, but we never know. Let me know what you think about Alice below after this shareholder meeting and let me know your thoughts about the company down below. Please note today, I'm giving a recap of Alice's second annual shareholder meeting. Morris Money breaking news, subscriber inflation data has been released. Month over month subscriber inflation is 15.9% below analyst expectations. If you want to raise inflation, subscribe to Morris Money. Last week, I gave my commentary on Alice's second annual shareholder meeting and I gave my thoughts and comments on what I saw from the meeting. I didn't have much to go off of as I didn't have anything official to go off of, but Monday, the company released an official summary of the meeting, so I'm going to discuss that. The company held its second annual shareholder meeting in Miami on January 27th, 2023, summarizing their 2022 performance and outlining their roadmap for 2023. Some of the key highlights for 2022 were the 2020 and 2021 audits completed. Their Form 10 filed and effective as of the 19th of December 2022, SEC reporting and penny stock exempt status obtained. Upwards of 450% growth in revenue over 2021. The expansion to eight companies in the group, now 11 companies. New headquarter offices opened in Dubai in early 2022, integration and consolidation of existing acquisitions 
an increase in facilities and manpower to over 10 million square feet and 1,200 employees respectively. In one of my past videos, someone called me out on saying respectfully instead of respectively, so I'm glad he did and I'm making sure that I get it right this time around. Next, let's talk about Alice's projections for 2023. An upwards of $200 million in revenue forecasted for current group companies, subsidiary uplist already in progress with important announcements planned to take place in the very near future, two further acquisitions planned for closing in the first quarter of 2023, upwards of $180 million in additional 2023 revenue for potential acquisitions with signed letters of intent in place or in late stages of negotiation, a rollout of conglomerate objectives through four subsidiaries using public special purpose vehicle entities such as Quality International Corp to complete acquisitions without substantially increasing Alice's outstanding shares, creating optimal value for Alice shareholders. Emergency Response Technology ERTs, subsidiary to increase U.S. vehicle and equipment manufacturing through planned acquisitions. Replay Solutions is currently negotiating the acquisition of a well-established waste recycling company with several operations and in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Hyperion Defense Solutions has been incorporated and is currently in negotiations for its first of three targeted acquisitions towards completion. A planned addition of senior executives to Quality International, QIND, Emergency Response, ERT, and the ILIS boards, and the consolidation of new acquisitions and NetSuite ERP integration across the current acquisitions. Since the 19th of December, ILIS has been subject to full reporting requirements of the SEC and looks forward to demonstrating its strong 2022 progress when filing its Form 10K annual report prior to the 31st of March 2023. As usual, it wouldn't be an official Alice video without getting some commentary from management. This time around, we have some comments from Alice's managing director, John Paul Backwell. Thank you to those shareholders who attended our annual shareholder meeting, both in person and online, particularly those who traveled from far to join us in person. A lot of information was covered on the day, which is why we have provided this brief summary with some key highlights. We have managed to build a truly phenomenal business in only two years and while it's important to reflect on how far we have come we are completely focused on building a multi-billion dollar global company by 2025. With that in mind a significant portion of our efforts and progress during the final weeks of 2022 and at the start of the new year will be unraveled during the first and second quarters of 2023 making for a very exciting next few weeks and months for our team and shareholders. What's going to be important here for Alice as I said in the last video is building back up that trust with shareholders and and providing tangible value for shareholders. Let me know your thoughts below about this summary that Alice provided for shareholders about the second annual shareholder meeting and let me know your thoughts about Alice down below. Today, I'm talking about Alice incorporating its defense subsidiary Hyperion Defense Solutions. To Juan Morris really presents the most spine tingling thriller of the year, Invasion of the Subscribers. There is only one way to survive this horror. Subscribing now to Morris Money. If I hadn't seen this with my own eyes. Alice announced Monday that they have incorporated Hyperion Defense Solutions to roll out its defense sector growth through several acquisitions and partnerships that are currently in progress. Alice co-founded Hyperion Defense Solutions alongside two experienced and esteemed British military veterans, Chris Derbyshire and Tim Gray. I apologize if I butchered either one of those names. Through their combined 34 years of military service and 22 years of holding senior roles in the defense sector, they have amassed a wealth of technical expertise and senior level contacts, as well as an acute understanding of defense customer requirements and military procurement processes. Building on this foundation, Hyperion is now rolling out its aggressive triple-pronged growth strategy which includes the following. 1. Acquisition of defense companies with advanced technology that is critical to protecting warfighters and the communities they serve. 2. Acquisition of the intellectual property rights to groundbreaking defense technology. 3. Strategic partnerships with leveraged senior relationships at both government and international organization level for participation in several large projects. 
Hyperion aims to provide effective defense capability through advanced technology in the following key areas, joint close air support, counter improvised explosive devices, security risk management, and simulation technology and services. Reading through the comments given by Alice's managing director, John Paul Backwell, I noticed that he said that they expect this division to deliver upwards of $15 million in profitable revenue this year before it ramps up exponentially in 2024. Something interesting to keep in mind. It's also worth noting that in the press release, Alice said that they're working on a large joint close air support acquisition for Hyperion Defense Solutions. So this could be something to add to your radar for this company. Let me know what you think about this news down below. I apologize that I wasn't able to get a full video out talking about the full press release and what Alice had talked about with incorporating this company. But if you do subscribe to the channel, you should have seen the Money Minute short we made talking about the confirmation of this news Monday. So make sure to be on the lookout for our Money Minute shorts because some topics that we don't get to immediately, we talk about in the Money Minute and then we do videos like this one with Eyeless. But let me know your thoughts down below. Another thing I wanted to talk about before we end this video is earlier this week, someone commented that I only read the news and press releases and this is 100% correct. The person tried to clown me for it, but I try to stick to reading the news and press releases as this is coming straight from the source and it keeps me away from giving my own opinion about the stock and keeping it 100% fact-based for you guys. Other than this, let me know what you think about this Atlas news down below. Please don't take this video as financial advice and thank you for watching. Morris Money.